Hey, wait a minute. How come Holden uh, wasn't going blind like everybody else trapped in that ancient structure uh, w uh, waiting out to the tsunami? Well, we get the answer in the one-eyed man. And he's, no, he has two, but nah, you get the deal. Uh, yeah, well, uh, problems are still there because they all hate each other. And, uh, but Mercury's a little bit smarter than the others. So he tries to keep things stable because he needs it that way until he can make his move on Holden because Holden's the, the obstacle for his, uh, you know, achievement to take it all. Well, uh, one of the, uh, guys that gets in a fight with a belter, uh, over water or what have you, and Mercury kind of breaks it up and resolves it and tells him to go away. And, um, this guy, uh, turns up dead. And uh, one of his buddies goes to uh, kill the uh, the uh, belter, drags him, and there's this water hole where the water got in, and they're using it. And uh, he tosses, he's going to drown the guy in there because he figures his buddy was drowned in there too. And uh, everybody's rushing to it to stop him. But as he pulls the guy back out of the water, uh, he's got these <laughs> green slug things <laughs> all over his head. And he suddenly starts uh, choking and then dies, drops right there. And the guy that uh, was trying to drown him, uh, he has one on his head. It falls on him and he's like, what the hell? And then he suddenly starts convulsing and dies. And so now they realize that the belter didn't kill uh, what the other guy. Uh, it was it was one of these slugs that got on him and, and killed him. As soon as it comes in contact with human skin, it releases some sort of toxin that just uh kills you so they realize holy crap we've got these uh, creatures inside and we didn't realize it and on top of that we're going blind so uh holden sees them and then oh crap there's a bunch of them and uh, now we're really in quite the fix <laughs> um and so uh, they got to deal with that and uh, maintain uh, uh, their distance from it and whatnot. And only Holden can do it. So they all stay in this group. And Holden just has to be the eyes for everybody as everyone slowly but surely goes blind. Amos, uh, turns out, has a deep-rooted psychological fear of blindness, more so than usual. I mean, I mean, good Lord, everybody would fear that. But uh, he really uh, loses his mind in all of this and uh holden has to drag him back he almost walks right into the slugs and would have died uh but holden drags him back to their little little camp area and he just has to sulk and sit there in his moment of weakness which is not easy for a guy like amos he uh you know doesn't like feeling uh vulnerable and whatnot uh, but uh, sadly, uh, now he pretty much is and is pretty much completely dependent on uh, on Holden. So, uh, meanwhile, Holden you know, keeps working with the, their doctor, who is now blind, so he has to read the computer uh, uh, messages and whatnot to tell her what, what the findings are as so they keep trying to figure out some kind of treatment. And uh, she keeps trying to work on things. Uh, and then she comes upon the idea that, well, we just need to know about uh, Holden's eyes and uh, the vitreous uh, fluid within his eyeball, he has to stick a needle in his eyeball <laughs> Jeez. and get some of the fluid, a sample of it, so the computer can an uh, analyze it. As it does this, and he's reading what he's seeing on the screen to her, and she says, oh, well, I hate to tell you this, but you don't have the disease, but you've got some precancerous cells in there. And he says, yeah, I know. I was exposed to radiation. If you recall, him and Miller got that dose, and it was even more lethal for Miller because he was in it longer. And uh, he's been taking medication to hold off uh, the precancerous cells there because inevitably he's going to die of cancer as a result of the exposure. And, uh, well, it turns out the medication is what has warded off the uh, the pathogens or the creatures or what have you. Uh, and so there you go. There's the cure. It's solved. <laughs> and they resolve it. Uh, because, uh, well, so I guess he just had enough of the stuff on hand to uh, treat uh, the others. And uh, their vision uh, is restored. And uh, they, they can leave. 
Uh, meanwhile, they come out, and of course, uh, they're pretty much on the beach at this point as the, the waters have receded, but not uh, completely. I guess eventually they'll recede a bit more, but, uh, uh, well, we'll see where it goes, won't we? Meanwhile, after the, uh, the, the attempt that uh, Christian did with uh, the Marines and uh, attacking the, or trying to apprehend uh, the insurgent guy, uh, with the OPA and all that, uh, it blew up in her face and it's all ruined. So she goes to the funeral of the Marines and uh, she's she breaks down and is teary eyed and uh, remorseful and uh, so takes the full blame for it all and everything. And then uh, says, I understand because my son was killed. <laughs> And she goes, and so uh, her husband does not like this because he knows what she did was that she won over uh, everybody here uh, for the uh, you know so that she's not her poll numbers are now better because of the emotional aspect which is typical of, of politicians if they can do it they will certainly will well what this is still the problem that she made the wrong call and uh, you 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 judge her up on that but. Oh, gee, she cried, you know, and that's what the, <laughs> the manipulation of emotion is the means by which it to get you to ignore uh, what she did. The husband, of course, knows this and is uh, really uh, pissed off because she basically used uh, the death of their son for this to make this work. And he said, you shouldn't use our son like that. And she's saying, well, you know, what I said was true. I really did feel that because, you know, my son. But in a way, that almost makes it worse because she's she's literally using her remorse and pain for her political gain. Hey, it rhymed. <laughs> but that's, you know, so I'm seeing a divorce in the future there, perhaps. I don't know. Um, so so that's what she did. She's becoming this cold, power hungry uh, person here. So uh, that's what they did. There, meanwhile, the results of that attack and everything has made things more difficult uh, between the UN and the OPA, and uh, Drummer's had enough, and she's walking away. Ashford has now more determined to go kill that little bastard, <laughs> and there's kind of a solemn moment where she he asks her to come with him, be his XO, and she can't do it, and she wishes him well and sees him off. And there's a scene where she takes one last look at him, and she was so. I think this is a foreshadow that uh, Ashford is probably doomed. Um, but uh, he may succeed, but still, he probably won't make it. Uh, but you know, there we go. So, oh boy, things just look terrible, don't they? <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, Bobby and her uh, gang of thieves uh, have this new mission that she's uh, very uh, iffy about. But the leader that recruited her, he explains that this is the this is the one job that can be the last one, and he wants to go. More of this. There's nothing here for Mars. We know it's coming to an end, and it's, it's foolish to keep hanging on to it. And he wants to take his family elsewhere, and with the money they can make on this job, he can do that. Problem is, it's probably all going to blow up in their faces, and uh, it sounds very sinister and wrong. Either it's a setup to get them busted, or... More than likely, it's uh, incredibly dangerous in dealing. Probably will bring them into the conflict of with this rogue OPA guy. So, well, it's just a guess, but we'll see how that works out. So, yeah. So the good news is uh, they're not blind anymore over at Illus, uh, but uh, <laughs> they're far, far from home in any manner, or what have you. Uh, and even if they did, they still have they'll get get back to trying to kill each other again, and that's. Uh, the ultimate human tragedy of the story. But then all of this is like, where the hell is Miller? Well, he shows up. <laughs> and it's one of those surreal scenes, and it appears something is jamming the communication again between Miller and Holden as he he changes appearance or outfits and what in a few seconds there and winks in and out, and then he, you can't hear him, and then all of a sudden he's screaming, and that's how it ends. So it all very ominous and sinister, but uh, such is the nature of the mystery of the proto-molecule and uh, Miller himself, if we can even consider that to be Miller. So there you go, another great episode of The Expanse. 
that continues to expand <laughs> on its entertainment value. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below. That'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you. Yes, that's right, you. Most notably, my comic book Night Night over at IndiePlanet.com. You can also catch my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos over at BitChute.